good people? It's your man Animal Brown checking in with another episode of the Sneaker Game. Today I'm in New York at the one and only Stadium Goods. I'm chopping it up with my guy Fresco BK. We're hopping in the time machine. We're gonna talk 80s sneaker culture, all right? I know he got some knowledge to drop on me. Let's go holler at Fresco. Let's go. Yo, what's good? Good, man. How are you? You all right? Cool. Hey, glad to be here, man. Welcome, Listen, welcome. Tell me about where we at and, and your relationship to where we at. So we are at Stadium Goods. We're located on 47 Howard Street, and that's in uh, Manhattan, New York City. And I am formerly one of the managers here, but now I'm uh, the editorial producer here at Stadium Goods. We specialize in a variety of things, but mainly what people know us for is our footwear selection and our streetwear selection. Let's talk about where it started, man, in the 80s. Let's go check out some of these early mics. Absolutely. Let's do it. We start here, of course, uh, Jordan 1, the uh, Chicago colorway. It's grown to possibly America's or the world's favorite Jordan, Jordan of all time. It's functional with like so many different looks. You can wear this on a skateboard, you can wear this to a wedding, you can wear it to court, unfortunately. But there are several things that you can do with the Jordan 1, so it's one of the most uh, universally utilized uh, Jordan silhouettes of all time, but of course, 1985. It's classic. Um, and there's so many sneakers that came in the 80s because this is a, uh, we live in the time of retro, so all those things are just coming back around. So we see Jordan 1s, and when it comes to value, mm. Jordan 1s always go up. Besides Jordans, what's another brand you think kind of crack things off? We got a shift over here, of course, to the Three Stripes brand, mm. Adidas. Shout out to uh, Adi Dazzler. Run DMC changed, uh, change the dynamic of what was entertainment marketing in regards to sneakers. They are the original influencers. Run DMC with the shell toe unlaced. They wore kind of what people were wearing in the streets of New York City. Mm -hmm. And that had a global impact and it, it changed Adidas business, like, totally. No shoestrings. But I personally feel like when you're rocking a pair of shell toes, you have to like loosen up the strings and give them a little bit of a little bit of flavor because uh, that's where they come from. That's where the sauce comes from. The sauce lasts forever. There it is. When it comes to Converse, Converse is the the brand with the original signature athlete, Chuck Taylor. And then you see the Chuck Taylor's bed on the side of most Converse shoes. You Chuck Taylor Converse All Star. So this was 1917. Mm. Yes, 1917. The original basketball shoe, Chuck Taylor. But now. Chuck Taylor, much like the Jordan 1, is just ridiculously functional and can be worn in any setting. Like, you wear this to school, you wear this anywhere. Now, with the new spin on it, there's so many ways to flip just a classic silhouette. Back in the 80s, it was one of the most affordable. Mm. So, when it's affordable, it's gonna fly. Absolutely. And it looks good. Chuck's, <laughs> he gotta love Chuck's. Chuck Taylor, I still can't right. believe they hooped in him, though. All right, let's see what Nike had to say, man. Oh, and we're in New York City, so we gotta talk Uptowns. <laughs> Can't talk about the 80s and not talk about Air Force Ones. When it comes to retros, uh, some of the most, the Air Force One is probably the first retro shoe. Because originally when it was released, this was back in 1982, mm. they, it was only in three spots, New York, Philly, Baltimore. But the demand was high. Okay. So the demand was high, not just with the hoopers, but also with the dope boys in the street and the people who resonated well. So of course, the uh, white on whites, white on whites are probably the most classic. They look good with everything. It's like certain brands have those staple shoes that look good with everything. Mm -hmm. White on whites with Nike, Timbaland with the construction boot, like there's certain, or New Balance with the, uh, is it the 996? Gray. Yep. Yeah, there's certain brands that just have that staple shoe that's good all across the board. So white on white Air Force One is definitely one of them. Why do they call them Uptowns? Uh, originally, the popularity of the Air Force One came from Uptown, New York City. Uh, that's like uh, Harlem. All right, man. Now we can't ignore. We got the Blazers, right? Definitely got Blazers. So Blazers are just outside of the '80s, either just before the '80s, but in regards to basketball and just their relevancy was built also during the 80s period. It's gonna be tough to talk 80s without the Nike Air Mag. 
I saw this movie definitely in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, it was the biggest sneaker moment on screen at the time. Um, a futuristic shoe with the auto lace. You see my man Marty McFly, and his name was Marty McFly. Come on now. Like it's uh, the universe. The universe is deeper than rap. Just at that time, seeing something that had an auto lace and thinking of what the future would be, mm -hmm. Man. What's your biggest takeaway, man, now that we look at it from the 80s to now? Uh, for someone who maybe didn't live back then, what's your biggest takeaway to where the game is now and where it's come from? The 80s, the 80s was a, it was one of the, one of those times where you could actually see a, a culture brewing and being created, but it was just on a lower level because there weren't as many people that were into it, there was no social media. You could see these different people in these different areas that gravitated to, to this one thing, which is shoes. I want to say the 80s, like planted the seed. Mm. And what we've grown into now in 2020, the, you, you see that seed is still, still strong because the retros are like the strongest yep. silhouettes out. There, there's a lot of new silhouettes that, that are solid, but retro kind of dominates the game and retro and sneakers. It stems far back, but the 80s, there's classics in the 80s. Absolutely, man. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you came from. Exactly, and I still don't know where I'm going. <laughs> but I can walk in a better direction when I pull up to Stadium Goods and pick up something from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and now we're in 2020. Facts. There it is, man. Fresco, yeah. I appreciate it, big dog. Absolutely. Thank you for coming through. You already know, man. To the for next sure. time. For sure. I told you, Fresco knows his 80 sneaker culture, man. Listen, it's your man, Animal Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Sneaker Game. We'll see you next time. <laughs>